Hi everyone, I would like to share a um, propose an exercise for the group groups we are doing uh, but also I know some of you out there are really interested in the work fourth way non-duality awakening work so feel free to use may it benefit you so in non-duality we talk about transcending the sense of me and the sense of being an independent entity um, localized in the body and transcending this this belief in separation belief that they are separate things and uh, as being the what needs to be uh, discovered the sense of me investigated challenged transcended into realizing the true me <laughs> the true self as the being which is aware and then realizing that this being may not be limited and what's the confessions of all sages and great spiritual teachers is that that is an illusion and that there's just one uh, reality one being god and we are kind of floating in it as expressions of god yeah and uh, however when we are starting on the uh, awakening path uh, it is even hard to conceive what that is about. I mean, I remember first time I heard that idea and I was like, dude, what do you mean I'm not separate? I mean, I'm separate. Yeah. It was somehow that is very lofty and advanced level to start to uh, work at the level of exploring the sense of me and uh, me feeling, me thought. And uh, before we can make that practical, it's important to uh, peel off kind of more thicker layers this sense of me sense of being a separate entity uh, a separate someone a separate person this this is made up of many layers many layers many layers thick that form the so-called uh, uh, ego or false personality imaginary picture of myself as they call it in the fourth way and what I appreciate about the fourth way is that they start kind of peeling off some gross layers. Um, and that's what I want to talk about. Um, it is said in the teachings that the, the actually the core quality of the sense of being a separate person or the ego um, is this, there's this narcissistic tendency narcissistic tendency which is not just for people that now i know on youtube it's a lot about you know narcissistic disorder and various this or that i'm not talking about that i'm talking about the fact that the very core of the ego is narcissistic in its tendencies and what i mean by that it is self-preoccupied it's about me about me 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 in different ways so um and that me is not the being, that me is the story of me, the mind-made sense of me. So, uh, one, uh, one, before we can kind of pierce through the finer layers of it and discover the, the, the reality of being, then we can uh, purify some of the thicker, denser aspect of this um, ego. And in the fourth way, there is this idea uh, that the ego, every ego has a, some kind of chief feature, chief feature, some core pattern of being, some core area where whenever we are in that chief feature, um, we are most mechanical, most automatic, most asleep. And we are encouraged in the fourth way teachings, uh, awakening teachings to, uh, as we are more and more aware, to observe uh, this this chief feature core tendency with which we identify and then uh, gain more information about it and gradually be able to 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 resist it to struggle with it not to get identified with this core tendency and one core tendency and core chief feature that is common for many people can take different form is what is called in the fourth way vanity vanity self-love um, pride 
yeah this can take different forms they can take the form of a very inflated um, kind of seeking attention and wanting to be seen wanting to be recognized wanting to be admired wanting to be in the spotlight uh, wanting to uh, be special there's some also some belief some other form of vanity is that one feels that i am i am special i am special i am better than you guys i am more wise i am more beautiful i am more i am you know you see this kind of and look at me and so this this is some form of active vanity that can take all kind of forms, you know, can be intellectual vanity. I'm, I'm, I'm vain about the intellect and the knowledge I have, vain about the my emotional sophistication and, and being a refined person. I'm vain about my athletic technical abilities. I'm vain about my, my house and my objects and my appearance. I'm vain about the body. I'm vain about my ability as a lover. So vanity and this self-love, um, the ego self-love I'm talking about, this is very um, strong, very pernicious. And it's a big obstacle to any type of awakening work. And uh, there's some other form of uh, vanity that is more like a passive or the other side of the coin where there's self-pity, self-deprecation, and where like I'm thinking I'm not good enough, I'm not enough, that I'm I'm a failure. I'm... But the idea is it it's it's kind of the same, it's the different side of the same coin. The same coin is all about me, me being wonderful, being special, or me being really bad. And but still a lot of attention on me. Yeah. So the exercise, yeah, that's I wanted to offer a very practical exercise we can use for two uh, two weeks or so. Um, it's um, like this: to refrain from talking about oneself, to refrain from talking about oneself. Um, yeah, this is vanity. Very, it is inflated or deflated vanity feature. Doesn't like that. There's a vanity has a strong tendency to uh, talk about oneself, to tell people about oneself, either all one's achievement or various realizations. You know, this can be subtle in a people on the awakening path. There can be subtle speaking about one's realization, one insights, what happened, what discovered, what feelings we had. So talking about oneself or talking about oneself, about all one's problems and difficulties and how hard it is for me and this or that, it's about me, yeah? So talking about me. So the exercise is to uh, refrain from talking about oneself for two weeks. And actually, if people ask you, people ask you, hey, how are you going, this or that, uh, just answer briefly and try to skillfully redirect the conversation away from oneself. Yeah, don't tell them, hey, I have this exercise in the fourth way not to talk about myself. So there's just more vanity. Try to keep your uh, work on being aware of the vanity inconspicuous. Yeah, so not talking about oneself and redirecting the conversation away from oneself in a skillful way um without being uh, conspicuous and another form of this exercise is internally try to catch yourself when you are thinking about yourself you know thinking about oneself i'm not talking about having no thoughts you know you still need to take care of the kids you need to go to your job you need to pay bills you need to do whatever you need to do that's fine but these thoughts about myself as a person, myself as a me. Uh, so try to use as an alarm clock. In the fourth way, the idea is that we use uh, our mechanical unconscious tendencies. We use our sleep in order to, to raise our level of consciousness, which is interesting. So we, we use our sleep in order to become more awake. Yeah, but for that, you need to have a very clear aim and very clear reminders and very clear stretch, this small aim, where you take for some time, yeah, each time 
so not to talk about oneself and to uh, refrain from thinking about oneself in that way about my problems about uh, how they didn't respect me and how they would think of me and how they they would think that I'm bad and how they think I'm stupid and how they judge me so this is what I'm talking about this kind of me centered thoughts and the way to go is that whenever you catch yourself in that like use that as an alarm clock and kind of drop that line of thinking and bring your full awareness in the present moment yeah so being very present aware of the here and now and remembering oneself yeah self-remembering remembering the sense of being being conscious being aware of being being as well as aware of whatever is happening in the here and now yeah so that's the exercise another variation with it would be that for the next two weeks you can actually because that not thinking about myself it is a very difficult exercise and from one angle it will be awesome to just notice how often the, the 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 ego takes over basically it's all about myself uh as a person as an imagined entity that is better or worse so you can count each time you catch yourself there oh you know this happened i don't know if they like me or yeah, I think that I'm more interesting than them. They don't have what it I, you know, this kind of comparisons, this kind of stuff. Whenever you catch yourself there, just drop it and you can even count like, oh, one time I, I caught it. And then come back to the present, come back to the presence and stay engaged as long as possible. And um, so use that tendency of sleep to wake yourself up and you can count and you can have maybe one day you can catch yourself like 27 times don't beat yourself up uh, but just be grateful and happy that you caught yourself you woke yourself up 27 times yeah so uh, we do all of this not in order to um, we do this in order to become more awake and to diminish sleep and to diminish this 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 thick narcissistic tendency of the ego which is universal in everybody whether one is like a big politician thinking i'm better than everybody or one feeling that i'm worse than everybody it's kind of the same energy it's all about the me me as but that me is not the presence the being it's not that it's some fictitious separate character that is actually the party pooper in our life. All right. Well, look forward to hearing your uh, comments and observations and let's play with it for two weeks. Ciao.